Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky, sponsored by Squarespace. And it is September, the month of the equinox and the equilux, the day of roughly equal day and equal nighttime. So I'm sure those of you in mid to high northern latitudes are rejoicing at the longer, darker skies. Coming up this month, we have the end of Milky Way core season. Jupiter is shining at its brightest, thanks to being at opposition. We have the famous harvest moon. There's a bit of meteor shower activity to talk about, and it's also one of the best times of the year to see the zodiacal light and the Gegen shine. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to host your website or online store. I would not be a full-time astrophotographer if I didn't have a good-looking website. I use it to show off my galleries to potential clients. It's a way for people to find me through Google searches. And as an online store, you can use it to sell physical products like I do with my book, Photographing the Night Sky. And you can also sell digital products like my Astro Workflow Lightroom preset. Squarespace handles all of the payment processing. It delivers the digital products automatically for you. Just makes everything so seamless and easy. If you'd like to give Squarespace a try, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Allen. Start off with one of their award-winning templates. And then if you're happy with your website and you want it to go live, use the code Allen at the checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name with Squarespace. Starting in the Northern Hemisphere, where as darkness falls, the Milky Way core can be found in the South, but that continues to set in the Southwest as the night goes on. But then that leaves the Great Rift region of the Milky Way standing pretty much vertically against the western horizon, and that's still very much worth photographing. Facing north this month, you'll find Ursa Major very low on the horizon, skirting the northern horizon in its upright position, so the bear is now standing upright on its legs, and it's a really good opportunity to photograph it with some foreground interest, because it's nice and low on the horizon, pretty much all night. Facing northeast this month, you'll find the bright star Capella of the constellation Auriga absolutely dominating that region of the night sky. But if you look high, you'll now see Andromeda, the spiral galaxy, is very high in the night sky from the evening. So it's a real good time to pull out the star tracker and focus on Andromeda. As for the planets this month, Saturn can be found in Capricornus and it's shining with a modest magnitude of 0.4. So you can see that it's just to the east, here, just to the left of the Milky Way core. Jupiter is at opposition this month, so it's directly opposite the sun and it's shining at its brightest for the year at a magnitude of minus 2.8. Mars rises just before local midnight and it's surrounded by a lot of beauties from the winter night sky. So if I just zoom in, you have Pleiades there, the open star cluster, you have the California nebula, and you also have Hyades surrounding the bright star Aldebaran in Taurus. As the night goes on, they all continue to rise in the east along with beauties like Orion and Gemini, and eventually Sirius will breach the horizon. So we now have the full winter circle in the night sky just before sunrise. And then you'll also see the planet Venus just before sunrise as well. As for close approaches and conjunctions this month, a nearly full moon will be found right next to Jupiter on the 11th. Five days later on the 16th, the gibbous moon can be found amongst Pleiades, Hyades and Mars in the eastern skies. And then on the 25th, you might be able to see an impossibly thin moon, so thin that you can't even see it on the app right now, uh, right next to Venus in the pre-dawn skies. If I just zoom into the moon, you can see that it's very slightly illuminated. So that will be a very difficult one to spot. As for the Southern Hemisphere, you should get a brief glimpse of Mercury just after sunset. And the Milky Way core, which starts pretty much overhead, sinks down towards the western horizon. And this provides a real nice opportunity for a Milky Way arch panorama facing west. You've got the Milky Way core nice and high, almost at the apex of the arch. 
Cygnus region over in the north and the Crux and Carina over in the south. Facing south towards the Circumpolar constellations and the Carina Nebula, the Crux and the Colsac Nebula spend the evening sinking low to the horizon, whilst the large and small Magellanic clouds spend all of the night climbing high on the eastern side of the southern celestial pole. Facing north, you'll find the Cygnus region of the Milky Way, along with the Great Rift region, arching across the northern horizon. And as the night goes on, you'll also see Andromeda, the spiral galaxy, also arching across the northern horizon, reaching its highest point in the night sky as it crosses the north-south meridian. Facing east and after local midnight, you'll find the southern summer constellations rising. So you've got the likes of Taurus, followed by Orion, lots of beautiful things there like Pleiades and Hyades, the California Nebula, and then eventually the likes of Gemini. So the southern summer circle now completely in the night sky in the pre-dawn hours. As for the planets, Saturn will follow the Milky Way core down to the western horizon there it is it's just popped on screen now and that is also being followed by jupiter which is an opposition so it spends most of the night very high in the sky and if i swing over to the east you'll see mars in and amongst the southern summer constellations and as we approach the pre-dawn hours you might get a glimpse of venus just before the sun rises. As for the special events this month, so we do have the equinox on September the 23rd, which marks the start of astronomical autumn. It's a day where there's roughly an equal length of day and night time, but the actual day of equal daylight and equal night time is called the equilux. And depending on where you are in the world, that can fall up to a few days before or a few days after the date of the equinox. Now, the time of the equinox is one of the best times of year to see the zodiacal light. It's a triangular, diffuse glow of light that emanates from the horizon in the deep twilight and into a little bit of the night time as well. So this month, if you're in the northern hemisphere, you want to be facing east in the pre-dawn hours in the morning. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, it's best seen in the west after sunset. It's caused by interplanetary dust. So there's a big band of dust in between the orbits of Earth and Jupiter. The source of that dust is believed to be Jupiter family comets and also from the planet Mars itself, although this is still very much up for debate. Now that dust scatters the sunlight back into the night sky. And because the dust is found in the plane of the planets, the ecliptic plane, when we see it in the night sky, it's always straddling an imaginary line called the ecliptic. And it's this line that the sun follows over the course of the year, and also the moon and the planets are always found roughly following that line across the night sky because they're all orbiting in that same plane, the ecliptic plane. And around the equinoxes is when the ecliptic is at its steepest angle against the horizon. And so the zodiacal light emanates higher into the sky. The higher something is in the night sky, the better it is to observe because you're looking through less of Earth's atmosphere. So if the ecliptic is very low on the horizon, it's very difficult to see the zodiacal light. But around the equinox, when it's nice and steep, it climbs higher into the sky and it's much easier to see. If you live close to the equator, you can see the zodiacal light pretty much all year round. And from a very dark location, you can actually see the zodiacal light all along the ecliptic line, spanning the entire night sky. Now, this also makes it a good time of year to see a special part of the zodiacal light called the Gegenschein. The Gegenschein is a slightly brighter bulge of zodiacal light at the anti-solar point. That's the point of the night sky that's directly opposite the sun. So if you have pristine dark skies, face south if you're in the northern hemisphere and north if you're in the southern hemisphere, and it's best to do that around local midnight when the sun is at its lowest below the horizon and the Gegen shine will be at its highest in the night sky. And it is a very faint light, so using photography techniques like stacking and tracking will help to unveil it better. But if you want a challenge this month, the Gegen shine is certainly up there.
Now there's not a lot of meteor shower activity this month, but September is the month of the year with the highest rate of sporadic meteors. So meteors that can fall in any direction from any point in the sky that are not associated with a particular meteor shower. But there are a few meteor showers that are worth knowing about this month. The first being the Alpha Origids, which peaks around September the 1st. And the radiant point is within the constellation Auriga, so it's a very much northern hemisphere meteor shower. And there is a crescent moon on the night of the peak on the 1st, so it's not the worst uh, viewing conditions, but not the best either. And this meteor shower never really makes it above a maximum of, of sort of 10 meteors per hour. So it's a very minor meteor shower. Then around September the 10th, the southern torrids become active. And this is a very long, gradual meteor shower with activity extending into the middle of November. And because the radiant point is within the constellation Taurus, it's visible from both hemispheres. The date of the peak, again, is still very much up for debate. Um, there's no real clear consensus, but it doesn't have a strong peak. The activity stays pretty constant and gradual throughout the next month or two and never really reaches more than five meteors per hour. So again, it's a very minor meteor shower. However, a high proportion of those meteors are fireballs. So meteors that are brighter than the magnitude of Venus, which is minus four. So keep your eyes on the skies this month. And if you're lucky, you might see a giant fireball tracing across the sky, thanks to the Southern Torrids. And that's all I've got for you this month, guys. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph, and then you can enter your images by uploading them to social media with the hashtag Wittens. Every month I choose my favorite three for a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a Constellation hoodie from my merch store. And first place wins a copy of my book, Photographing the Night Sky. Last month's theme was the Milky Way core. And it's very hard to choose a winner. There were lots of images with impressive detail and editing, but I went for images that made me feel something. So in third place was Compool and Kai. I'm not even going to attempt to say that with this image of four people under the stars in La Palma just enjoying themselves. You just feel the pleasure of being out under those incredible dark skies and they just look like they're having a great time. So nice, simple image, but it just made me feel so happy. So well done to these guys. In second place was this image from Ryan of the Milky Way core above the volcanoes in Hawaii. And you can just feel the warmth from that lava and just incredible to be out under the stars under the milky way in front of an active volcano i thought that was super cool and in first place was this image from jess alvarez in the dolomites and just really nice composition the jagged peaks of the dolomites just look so impressive nice natural processing on the night sky and a bit of wispy high cloud to add a bit of atmosphere and it's picking up the glow of the yellow sodium based light pollution it just adds a nice overall saturation to the image so i really like this one now this month let's go for and i haven't done this for a while but i'm just going to do a free for all just any image of any night sky subject but you will certainly get bonus points for the gag and shine so keep that in mind thanks for tuning in to another episode of what's in the night sky hit subscribe if you haven't already let me know which event you're looking most forward to in the comments down below and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon i wish you good luck and clear skies